Hi everyone, Dr. Ahmed Ergin here. I'm an endocrinologist in Fort St. Lucie, Florida, which is in the middle of Treasure Coast. I am one of the few doctors who actually performs thyroid radiofrequency ablation, or RFA in short, in my clinic. Now, thyroid nodules are extremely common. If you put an ultrasound on everyone, like everyone, about half of adults would have at least one nodule in their thyroid. Most are harmless, but some get big enough to cause trouble. That's where RFA comes in. Today, I'm going to talk about what nodules are, why RFA works, and how thyroid nodules connect with both type 1 and type 3 diabetes. So a thyroid nodule is just a lump in the thyroid gland. Like I said, most are benign, some of them are cancerous, and some are cystic, some are solid, and some are mixed. Now, symptoms depend on size and location. Small ones, you do not feel. Larger ones can cause a lump in the neck, trouble swallowing, or cosmetic concerns. Now, we check nodules with ultrasound. Obviously, we do an exam as well with the fingers. If a nodule looks suspicious, though, on the ultrasound especially, we do a fine needle biopsy to rule out cancer. But the truth is, the majority are benign. So maybe less than 5% chance are cancerous, depending on the nodule. Now, traditionally, if a benign nodule got too big, surgery was the only option, okay? Surgery works still, but it leaves a big scar, can require lifelong thyroid medication. It will need general anesthesia. I'm sorry, I said it, might, it may need, it will need. But with the RFA or radiofrequency ablation, it's totally different. It is minimally invasive, done in the office. You use ultrasound to guide a thin probe into the nodule. Then using radiofrequency energy, we heat and shrink the tissue from the inside. No incision, just a small numbed area. You go home the same day. Over the next 6 to 12 months, the nodule usually shrinks by 50 to 80 percent or more. That means less pressure, less discomfort, or no discomfort anymore, and your thyroid gland stays intact. Complications are rare when done by trained doctors. Sometimes patients notice mild soreness or like worse hoarseness for a few days, but permanent side effects are very uncommon. Here is where it gets interesting, okay? Now, people with type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome have a high risk of thyroid nodules. Why? Well, insulin resistance, right? High insulin levels act like a growth signal for many tissues, including thyroid. Over time, this makes nodules more common in people with type 2 diabetes, obesity, or metabolic syndrome. So if you are dealing with type 2 diabetes and you find out that you have nodules, you are not alone, okay? It is part of the same metabolic picture. Now, let's talk about type 1 diabetes. Here's the link is a little bit different. It is not insulin resistance. It is the immune system. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease, immune system attacking the pancreas. And autoimmune diseases tend to travel together. So the thyroid is one of the most common targets for autoimmunity. Hashimoto's, which causes hypothyroidism, and Graves' disease, which causes hyperthyroidism, are much more common in people with type 1 diabetes. That's why guidelines will also recommend checking thyroid function and sometimes thyroid antibodies in everyone with type 1 diabetes, even if they feel just fine. And those people tend to have more nodules because of the inflammation in their thyroid. Now, from a functional medicine perspective, we always ask, what is the root cause, right? For type 2 diabetes and nodules, it is often the insulin resistance. That means fixing lifestyle, sleep, nutrition, exercise, not just chasing blood sugar with meds, right? For type 1 and autoimmune thyroid disease, we talk about gut health, nutrient status, and stress, which plays roles in immune balance. The nutrients like selenium and iodine matter, but the balance is key. Too much or too little can backfire. I check levels and I personalize my care for my patients instead of throwing supplements like at everybody at every problem. Why RFA matters, okay? If you've got a benign thyroid nodule that is growing or bothering you, RFA is a great option, a non-surgical option. You don't need to lose your thyroid for a lump that is not even cancer. Surgery still has its place, but for the right patient, RFA is really a lot safer, faster, preserves your thyroid function. In my clinic, patients who have struggled with large nodules tell me after RFA, Doc, I can finally swallow normally again, or I don't feel that lump in my neck anymore. And that happens fairly quickly, actually. Within the first one to three months, we see the majority of the difference. So here's the big picture. Thyroid nodules are common. 
often benign, but tied to insulin resistance and autoimmune disease. People with type 1 or type 3 diabetes are more likely to run into a thyroid problem. And like I said, RFA is a minimally invasive option to shrink benign nodules without the surgery. So if you have diabetes and you have been told you also have a thyroid nodule, don't panic. Get it checked, understand your options, and ask whether the RFA might be right for you. Again, I'm Dr. Ahmed Ergin. If this video helped you, I would suggest hit like, subscribe, and the bell button. Leave a comment, ask a question. For example, have you ever been told that you have a thyroid nodule before? Let's talk about it.